Hey buddy, it's John with Planet Tech, and this is the continuation of our top-down shooter. Um, sorry, it's been a little while. I've been working on some other stuff, but we have our top-down guy with a two weapons uh, little setup, and I may make a um, pickup system. So, you know, like in Halo, where you can only have two weapons, and you can switch them out depending on what you see around you. Right now, the guy has a blaster pistol and a, uh, a, a rifle. So his little blaster pistol is right, uh, his rifle is right here. Well, that's what it looks like. And then his blaster pistol is this one. Okay. And then we have a couple of dead guys and we have a bug right now uh, because I did actually have a little. Um, game file crash whatever because I was working on this on my laptop and did it right correctly I had to actually rebuild part of this so he has his animations done I just have to work on his AI again uh, the game character dude he's he's done pretty much um, I got his, his health has to be capped so it doesn't go above 100 in the same with the ammo it doesn't go below zero other than that he's pretty much golden um and then I just have to get him to interact with all the doors. Set up two keys. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna have to unlock this computer room. So you get in here, you find key, then you go into the other computer room, you unlock a key. And if you're wondering what that little, the uh, jagginess is, is because I actually placed these walls over the, uh, created walls so I created a room using copper cubes uh, where is it uh, create a room mesh on a, a 2d map so basically um, this 2d top-down view actually creates a 3d model so I just use that as a basic template and then later on I actually just delete the template or the room I created um, and then that just leaves the uh, meshes that I placed over it so right now I am still kind of finishing up the rooms so but you have to unlock a key in that room and then go over here you, uh, that's when you actually spawn more of the bugs so they actually have eggs axe over here and a gel and they're kind of taking over the place so these are actually like um, machining like laser whatever thing they they build stuff and and they've already kind of like taken down one I'm gonna put some more stuff over here and we got ourselves like a, a generator and it's kind of like partially you know gelled over we have a computer cell over here uh, we have some servers and then a computer and then another little generator so you're supposed to go into each room unlock the uh, the, the master door which is over here and basically defeat the bucks and then we have a special room over here that you can shoot at the wall and then get some specialty stuff in there um, but that's some basic bug stuff and then I'm working on more of an open maybe a little bit more open world so you have to go from facility to facility to actually um, fight the bugs to finally find the nest and like the big major nest and then just kind of like exterminate them so what I have is we're going to hit play on this. And it pops up. And he rotates to the mouse. Now when you press 1, his rifle comes up. And when you click, he shoots. And as you can see, we, we just lost um, what I'm going to... Literally, it, since it's like a, it runs off plasma, it's a plasma rifle and a plasma pistol, he, he lost 10 power cells. And then if we click two, we have the pistol and we click, we only lose one power cell. And then he has a walk. I am working on his walk. Then we have the door. And then we have some pickups. I'm going to create some icons that go around these rifles so you can see them. Um, like little glowing sprites or whatever. And then there might be like a couple bugs left over from the invasion over here. 
and you click up uh, collect some uh, ammo you come over here and then you kind of hack into it and then while it's while you're downloading like the key part one of the key um, or to gain access so there's gonna be a little time limit you're gonna be attacked by a bunch of bugs and then you destroy all these eggs and everything and then you have to walk over to the next room And then go over to the computer over here, or one of these computers. Um, I may put one right here in the middle, so you can just like go, oh, go there. And then I'll put like a little arrow uh, icon, so it's constantly going up and down and pointing at that guy, or not the guy, but the uh, computer saying, hey, this one. And you hack into that. And then if you want, you can go over here. You can shoot the wall, collect some stuff, Make some um, health stuff, like um, health packs or needles or whatever, regenerative stuff, um, ammo. Then you come through here, and then you leave, and you either go outside the facility and then go to another, you know, what, um, like a power room uh, where you restart the generator to, you know, turn on another facility or whatever but right now we're going to actually go over the guy's uh, weapon switching and then health ammo that type of pickup so if we go over stuff previously that's probably just to cover uh, to make sure you guys all understand um, so the main important stuff is that we have um, the character he's rigged he's animated uh, he's going to have weapons so there are, are, are weapons that are outside and there are weapons that he's holding and right now they're actually set to be invisible so if we go and zoom in on this guy um, here's animated mesh and then if you click right on your animated mesh you can modify selection you can actually create a attach a node to the joint so a node is literally th think of like a folder um, you can attach something to the bone if some of you maybe already know about the 3d modeling uh, I'm explaining it to people who are getting into it but literally all of these blue lines um, on our character I'm gonna click on them I guess if we can click on them there we go but all these blue lines they're bones just like in our body and I'm attaching stuff to the actual um, n not actual bones but as you can see there are certain like little angles that is like a little pivot point so think of a line and between each joint there's like a little ball and we're attaching stuff to that stuff so I'm not attaching something to his hand I'm attaching something to his wrist I can click on it right here so this green box is literally attached to this guy's let me work on this uh, wrist right here where all the fingers start sprouting out right there so it's like okay think of a folder a folder within a folder and Wherever that guy's arm is going to go, if you have a mesh, okay, so we're going to make mesh aid. Okay, mesh aid is his head. Uh, his head's separate from his body. Okay, so rifle and pistol. there we go there's the pistol and again that's actually attached to um, the green folder called wrist that allows me to attach stuff to it right now we want it invisible okay 
So now that we know all that, let's go through the code on our animated character. Um, so he has a list of animations. And if you've seen my other videos on animated characters, you know, you kind of know uh, what's going on here. So we have a game character with health. So this is, so we want to say, okay, this is the player. He has health. Okay, so normally, um, do you want to say 50 instead of minus 50? I had to, um, I didn't angle him correctly inside of Blender. And normally this is, this is a guy from Unity. So I'm taking a guy from who's supposed to be used for one engine and putting him into another. So you have to play around with him. So I had to actually invert him inside out. What I mean by that is normally he's actually supposed to be like this. And I just switched him like that. so that he could walk forward because every time I press W he would actually walk backwards um, third player sh shooter camera so this is a actually a plugin that I asked Nico the guy who created this engine to actually uh, create for me a, I'd say about a year back because I wanted to create a top down shooter similar to uh, I don't think it was shadow gun I don't think it was called uh, Shadow Gun. Um, it was a early 2000 top-down shooter with monsters. Um, and then you have his movement speed and everything right there. And you can actually download this if you go plus scripted behaviors, download more. It's gonna give you. It's gonna send you to a site where you can download the plugins. And if you go to your documents, that's actually uh, where you're gonna find your Copper Cube folder. And then when, okay, so this is when we get start getting into some of the code is when a key is pressed, do something. So key one, so when we press key one and the, and the uh, key event is when we press down, it's gonna do three things for us. It's going to hide or unhide a C node. In this case, it's gonna make visible the rifle. So when we press one, it says, okay, uh, one is being pressed we're going to make something visible at the same time we're going to make sure that the ray gun or his pistol is invisible because we're not we're not dual wielding at all and we're going to change a variable so variable name gun type is set to the value of one again this is a little bit later where we have a check and balance system so gun type Number one is going to be the rifle. Um, again, this is also where we map um, like his weapons to the number key. So one is rifle, two. So we could have put the value of two, and that would have been, you know, when you press number two, you can switch uh, to a different weapon. We could have put number three, we switch to some sort of like laser or lightsaber or a dagger or say a bazooka. Um, it, it's also um, helps us like, so whenever we uh, press the mouse button, it's going to keep track of what weapon that we currently have in, in, in our hands, or in this case, the, play, uh, the character's hands, and how much ammo he's expending because the plasma rifle uses more, so we say, energy to shoot than the pistol does. So it's saying, okay, I'm going to take 10 plasma away from the our ammo storage, and I'm going to display it on the screen so the player knows. But I'm going to check to see which gun he's running. So it's going to check the variable. So we're gonna set or change the variable. So when we press one, it's going to be okay the value of one so it's going to say okay when we press one the variable is going to be one when we click the mouse button it's going to check okay is he running variable one or two since those are the only variables that we have if it's one i'm going to uh, take 10 away from our ammo storage if the variable is two i'm only going to take one plasma you know unit away from our ammo storage because number two our vari uh, variable two is the pistol, so use this less ammo. Hopefully that that is clear. 
Okay, so that's under variable name gun type. Always make sure of your variable names. We want to make sure it's equal to the value of one. When the key is pressed, do something. So, okay, this is key two. So it's literally copying um, key one. When that is pressed down, we want to make sure that the ray gun is visible, the pistol, and we want to make invisible the rifle. And again, when variable name gun type is set to the value of two, okay, so variable uh, is now equal to two, is now e going to mean the pistol. And then uh, collide when moves so that means that the guy has a collision box again this doesn't have a mesh collision system so it's not going to be like um, where a collision box is mapped out just like his actual 3d mesh so if I were to take this guy uh, we could do it right now to wireframe a mesh collision box would be a literally copying every single one of these triangles just like him to be a little bit more realistic instead and I'll click on him again we have a sphere as you can see it right here I wish I could change the color but it's literally just covering him so you might be like oh his shoulders going through the wall um, you can't get like uh, you can make it like if, the, if it was a cube or a rectangle collision box it would be a little bit more accurate but this is as close as we're going to get until the 3D creator uh, creates a more of a, um, uh, what do you call it, a uh, mesh collision system. So it would be similar to if I were to click on this, it would, it would literally cover everything instead of being a uh, solid block. So these green lines would not be here. They'd be actually fo uh, following every single angle. Okay, so it's a little bit older and technology, hopefully that gets updated. So we have our character, we have our, our camera, uh, we have our weapon system set up. You have to go into, uh, so I also, Put code into the new 3D scene too. So this is basically to me, uh, it's just like a, a folder. Um, so before the first drawing, do something. Set health to a hundred. Um, every few seconds, do something. Change 2D to the to the overlay text to um, health. So it says, okay, that's health, that's health. Um, uh, okay, so now we're getting into uh, shooting. Okay, so this is uh, just for the shooting. When a key is pressed, do something. So real quick, I am going to make something visible. Okay, but you didn't see the thing. Um, so I have a 2D overlay and that's how I register shooting is by clicking on this massive 2D overlay it allows me to activate the character's shooting animations. So on left click mouse button and I'm going to if a variable has value do something. Okay remember we are a weapon switching relies on us pressing one or two. If a variable name called gun type if the value is equal to the value of one Remember when we press one, it means his rifle. I want you to do four actions. I want you to set the animation of the character to, uh, at this point, we only have one uh, shooting type for the rifle. And that is shooting four times. I want you to do something later. So at this point, the engine does not have, and I'm hoping Nico does this, is a active, um, I want him to do a end of animation um, which is similar to if you know Copper Cube, you are, uh, you've seen the do something later command. I want him to do something like that. At end of animation, do something. Until he creates that command line, 
all all I can do right now is do something a do something later command line. So at the end of the animation, which I've kind of estimated at a thousand milliseconds or uh, roughly one second, I want it to do something. So we open up another command box, set animation back to um, idle, or in this case, our only idle is a rifle rifle idle. Um, hide our on hide scene node. Uh, so at this point, uh, we want to make visible. So when we click on something, okay, so we click on this gigantic, basically GUI or graphical user interface, and it's going to check, okay, where, um, like what weapon are you using or gun type? Well, the value is one. Okay, so we're going to set the animation. We're going to do something later when the animation ends. And we're going to make visible the to the overlay. And then we're going to change uh, set or change a variable. Uh, there we go. We're going to subtract 10, because remember, variable 1 refers to the rifle. And we're going to have another variable called ammo. And that also relates to the GUI interface ammo. And we're going to say, hey, I want you to subtract 10 from it. Again, it's the same thing for the pistol. I'm missing one. Two, something later, unhide our heights. No, uh, it's set. Uh, no, I have it. No. Oh, I do something later. Set animation. Hide on hide a C node. Yeah, it's a hide on hide a scene node. I need to put that in. Um, but again, it's animated mesh one. We're going to change it to set animation. So animated mesh one is our character. And we're going to change the animation to pistol shooting. Oops. Do something later. It's about a thousand or one second later. We're going to go back to rifle idling. So after he shoots, he's done. And then we're going to subtract one from the um, ammo. And that's it. Now, on the, our, my other one, I have to do this to the pistol, is if, say I click three, but we don't have any co other code set up for three. If a variable has a value, do something. Well, action, we have four actions, but if none of these pan out, we have an else. So if variable name gun type is equal to um, say three, we have an action or else do something else. So in this case, it's idle. So if the, if the code doesn't pan out, then we, we just keep continuing. It's like if ammo is set to zero, well, we can't do these four actions. We'll just continue going to uh, set animation to idle and put up a GUI on the screen saying you are out of ammo. So we'll work on that a little bit later. Um, I think that's it again. You guys know how to do doors. Um, we'll set this to be done. To uh, the overlay and on visible so I can select stuff. Um, basically, we're going to have a behavior. It says on proximity. So when this character, so okay, so we have a a test area, a basically an action area, and you guys can see the the, the little sphere. Um, that's when we, that's an activation area. So when we enter the sphere, and its distance is fifteen. I have no idea what metric system they're using or distance. Near to what a C node that C node is animated mesh one. Uh, 
when he leaves the area, so when he exits that sphere, we're going to change the position to this position. So all I did was I moved it to where I wanted them to be closed, and then I just copied its position. I set it to be animated. I said, hey, you're going to do this in a thousand milliseconds or one second. I just took the location from it by clicking on it and it says position right there. Now we have an open so all I did was move it to where I wanted it to be when it opened. It said hey when also when you're in 15 whatever distance away from it and you enter said sphere and this would be the animated mesh I want you to change the position to this position coordinate uh, this coordinate line and within one second you're going to open so if we click play and it's building the little test scene again we can rotate I need to set up a when you know When not moving, you're an idle. But you can just walk around. So that's basically it. Um, also, we're going to have like a little map or in the lower left hand corner so that we can see where we're going. Um, I think I'm going to set up an outside area so we can at attack more bugs. So again, we're going to have bugs like these, and I'm going to have a couple more bugs and then a bug queen or whatever. Um, I just started back to school or college for my final semester so it's, it's getting, kind of getting started up um, so I've got that to do oh uh, ammo so that's ammo and then that's health and then this is a key I'm gonna have several keys to unlock specialty doors and this is on proximity a test area box near to what uh, select I need to reset this to animate mesh one. Inner radius. Uh, set or change variable ammo. So we're going to add 30 and then we're going to delete it. And that's the same. This is the same thing except instead of putting um, ammo, it's health. And this is uh, a key. So this refers to locked doors. So it's going to be literally um, a key variable. So it's going to be a variable. Uh, let's do this real quick. Um, so you would have game behaviors. Okay, so we have to go to new scene uh, or new 3D scene 02. Uh, go to be before first drawing, also on reload action. We want to set or change a variable, and this would be key is equal to one okay so when we collide actually you would want to set that to zero because it's a starting variable and you could actually um, attach this to the character himself but I like keeping like neutral scripts up in the uh, CD, C, uh, the scene um, folder. So when we collide with this, we're going to say add one to, um, what do you call it? Uh, the, the variable called key. And so whenever we go through a level saying, hey, uh, you need a level one key to get through this door. It's not a general door. Well, we already have it. And we can put up like a little icon that says, hey, we have the key. Um, and then if it's like, hey, if we collect other keys, instead of checking for every single key, which you can do if you want to be like super like, um, like, like checklist and everything. But what you can do is say we have the guy and he collects like the green key the yellow key the the blue the blue key or whatever say there's four keys 
what you can do is have this door. So we're going to put a little uh, code on this door. It's not going to do anything quite yet. Uh, actually, yeah. OK, we'll do it right here. Um, actually, this is getting a little long. So right now, it's going to be game behaviors Um, but it would be if variable is equal to something, then activate. Clicked on this, do something. Cursor's moved over. Uh, okay, on proximity to do something. Near to what a C node select. Uh, a animated mesh action okay this is how you do it so on proximity to something what a c node that c node being our animated mesh we want to variable or text um, if a variable has value do something so this would be okay our variable key and say you have all four keys and uh, let's see we could say is bigger than one or we could say is equal to four. So you could say, okay, yeah, our uh, we have a key, we have all keys, and it's equal to four, or uh, you know, bigger than three. We can do something, but say our key is equal to one. Well, what do we do then? And we want to access, uh, you know, we go up to a door that requires key four. Well, if the key value is not equal to, say it's not equal to three, we have an action or a, a non-action. So we could set up a script that says, if a, vari uh, if a variable has value, do something. Key is equal to four, action, open door, else, you know, uh, pop up, you know, we could say unhide or our hide a scene node, or we have another scene node, a, another scene item, say we, uh, you know, like a plane or a GUI or something like that appear in front of the character. So we can have a little model appear for the character or change its color or change its texture to be red. And then it'll say, oh, that means that the door is locked and we can have a GUI or graphical user interface just like our health and ammo icons on our screen pop up and say you need key four we could pop up an image and have it rotate or whatever we can you know we can be fancy about this and say hey you need this key look go look for it so that's something that we're probably going to do in the in the next video um since a lot of since this entire level actually uses pretty uh, most of it uses stuff from the unity asset and i can't just distribute this i'm going to be uh and i want to this is for an actual like game i want to make so you're going to see a lot of changes i'm going to see if i can spend a couple uh like an hour or two just changing out all these our assets for some uh free ones that i found on the unity and some models on the model resource uh, site you can look up. It's a place where they uh, rip 3D uh, models from video games that I can use those for my demos. So hopefully you like this uh, tutorial guys. Um, you're going to see the download for it pop up in I'm going to say the next three days. I do have some more work to do. Uh, homework to do so that's um, something I have to do work on. So sorry it's been 34 minutes. I just wanted to kind of cover everything. Again, we're going to work on why I have a animated, you know, fireball mesh. We're going to work on our alien bugs. Um, why I have two fireball meshes. I wanted something kind of cool, so I'm working on what I want to do with that. And um, I should have a demo also with the next three days of this actually being pretty much complete with the alien bug AI and more of the scene actually 
like create um finished fleshed out and we're going to actually move into animated scenes um uh, some test areas so in the start of the game what you're going to do how you were assigned this mission blah 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 and i think that's it for now i'll see you guys in the next video like subscribe comment down below on what you would like to see um and if you would maybe kind of think of supporting this on steam i was it steam green steam whatever games um or gog.com if it was free so i'll see you guys later bye